Time now for Morning Rounds with CBS News Chief Medical Correspondent Dr. John LaPook and CBS News contributor Dr. Tara Narula. First up, Zika. As we get closer to winter, many Americans might think the spread of the mosquito-borne virus is slowing down. However, as seen in Texas this week, that appears not to be the case. The Texas Department of Health announced they're dealing with what might be the first case of locally transmitted Zika. If true, Texas would join Florida as the only states to have seen the virus transmitted locally from a mosquito. So every state in the continental U.S. has reported having travel-associated cases. Tara, what, what do we think the response to this is going to be? Well, this does not come as a surprise, Anthony. We expected this. It's the area of the country where this mosquito it can still breed. The type of weather is warm. It's also in close proximity to Mexico, where there's close tra there's travel across the border. We know that Mexico has active cases. So what the plan is basically for CDC, local uh, state health officials, to try to figure out are there any other cases besides this female uh, case that they found. How and where did she get it? They're investigating that by looking at her home, testing urine samples from neighbors. They're also capturing mosquitoes and testing them, spraying, and then right. really focusing on public education at this point to try to, again, tell people how to prevent the disease and how to remove possible uh, breeding grounds for the mosquitoes. John, we're hearing about new research that details brain abnormalities that may develop after birth. What more can you tell us about that? Well, you know, we had said all along, and we were told by the public health experts, expect the first cases, the microcephaly with the severely small heads, to be the tip of the iceberg. And in fact, that's turned out to be true. Mm -hmm. So there's a report from the CDC of 13 infants who were born. They seem to have normal-sized heads at birth, and then over time, uh, the heads stop growing normally. And then also, as they look more closely, they see problems with their vision, with their hearing, with hip dysplasia, other problems. So it is the tip of the iceberg. It's an evolving situation, and we have to keep watching very closely to see what is this syndrome actually going to turn into. Tara, the World Health Organization said recently that Zika is no longer classified as a public health emergency of international concern. What are we supposed to take from that? We're supposed to take that this is a change in language, a yeah. change in definition. But this is not a downgrading of the importance or seriousness of this problem. Okay. And the World Health Organization is basically saying they need to just change their strategy at this point, make a technical plan about how to deal with this on a long-term basis. In February, when they made that declaration, that was at a time when we were seeing cases of Zika, we were seeing microcephaly. We didn't know if they were related. The Olympics was looming on the horizon. Now we have a better understanding. But again, bottom line is we still need more more research funding, aggressive approach towards this. The problem is that a lot of public health experts say that by changing this definition, yeah. you may have a psychological impact. Right. And so governments and donors may yeah. not put as much funding in. People may not take as many precautions against mosquitoes or sexually that they need to against this disease. At a time where we're seeing expanding cases in Asia, we're seeing cases in the Americas, we don't have a vaccine, and it's also about to be summer in the Southern Hemisphere continue to take it seriously. Moving on to the next topic, a remarkable new study on the use of hallucinogenic drugs in medicine. Published this week in the Journal of Psychopharmacology, it looked at the impact of the mind-altering compound psilocybin on cancer patients dealing with anxiety and depression. Psilocybin is found in what is commonly known as psychedelic mushrooms or magic mushrooms. John took a look. After Dinah Baser was treated for ovarian cancer in 2010, the next two years were filled with dread. All I thought about was the cancer, that it would come back and I would die of it. How severe was the anxiety? Were you able to go on with your life? I felt like it was destroying my life. Yeah, I mean, sometimes... In 2012, happens, Baser entered a study to treat anxiety and depression in cancer patients using the hallucinogenic drug psilocybin, the active ingredient in certain mushrooms. Dr. Stephen Ross directs addiction studies at NYU Langone Medical Center and led the study. The idea was that uh, drugs which were known to induce spiritual or these unusual mystical states of consciousness might help people who are having this domain of distress. Baser took the medication in this treatment room with therapists present for support. During this session, she saw her fear yes. inside her body. And as soon as I visualized the fear, I became furious. In my mind, I screamed, who the hell do you think you are? I won't be eaten alive. From that moment, the fear was gone. You took control. I took control, and it was gone. The NYU study and the second one at Johns Hopkins followed a total of 80 patients for six months after a single dose of psilocybin. 
there was lasting reduction of anxiety and depression in 60 to 80 percent of the patients. I began to feel the most amazing love I have ever felt. I think my brain was rewired a little bit, and that love that I felt has done very well, very, very good things for me. John, that is fascinating stuff. The, 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 this seems to be a huge burgeoning field of research. Yes, and you know, there are so many drugs that were banned as part of the war on drugs. So now we're seeing research into the use of marijuana for various conditions. Uh, the FDA just approved ecstasy, a trial to look for PTSD, and now we have the use of psilocybin. And it's good that we're going to have careful studies. For, for years, we've had our arms handcuffed behind our back, and people said, okay, you know, let's do some research. Well, now our arms are in front. We can do the careful research, and these have risks and benefits. Let's see in controlled trials trials, whether they're useful and how they're useful. And it's not just easing the mental suffering, but we know how important your mindset is to treating the physical aspects of diseases. So being able to offer patients another option, really, really yeah. great. And just talking to Dinah, I mean, how remarkable. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's Look at her. Stories are incredible. So you, you can see it in her face. It's great. All right. Dr. John Lapook and Tara Narula, thank you both.